Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Selang Church of Christ and our Sunday morning worship. We are glad that you have joined us either online or live in person. We hope that today's lessons and our singing will bring edification to you as we strive to serve God in everything that we do. Brother Kish. Good morning. Let us let's start by singing hymn number 682. To God be the glory. 682. To God be the glory. Let's sing. To God be the glory. Great is he and so Here we are, but straying pilgrims. Here we are, but straying pilgrims. Let's sing. Here we are, but straying pilgrims. Here our pad is off and dim. But to cheer us on our journey, still we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder. Shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever. And the smile of a blessed giver gladness all our longing eye to hear our feet are off and weary. Our hearts within us 
sink yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise soon will be our home forever and the smile of the blessed giver gladness of our longing eyelids hear our soul our off and fearful of this pilgrim lurking foe but the Lord is our defender and he tells us we may know yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise soon will be our home forever and the smile of a blessed giver gladness of our longing eyes the Lord stand for opening prayer let's pray to our Lord Heavenly Almighty Father, our God in heaven, once again we come before your holy presence, O Lord, thanking you for the opportunity, thanking you for the time that you've given us, that we may come together as one body of Christ and to sing praises to you, O Lord. May you be with us right now as we continue to sing praises, O Lord. May you be with us as we open your holy book. May you always be with us as we partake of the Lord's Supper and remember our Savior and Holy Lord Jesus Christ, may you be with our brethren that are not with us, that are home right now. May you be with the brethren in all parts of the world that are continuing praising and coming before you, O Lord. May you keep us holy, O Lord. May you give us the opportunity that we would share our knowledge about you and all your Son. May you also help us to stand the right way. May you help us, O Lord, that we may follow the path that Jesus has given to us. May you also forgive us for the sins that we have committed to you and to people around us. May we always remember you, O Lord, in everything we do. This, O Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bago po tayo dumako sa Banaladulang, before we proceed to the Lord's Supper, let us sing hymn number 644. 644. He said the feast divide. He said the feast divide. The poor within. He said the feast divide. The bread of
Mga kapatid, tayo dumadako sa bananadulang na dito natin inaalala ang kamatayan natin Panginoon na ating tagapagligtas na si Jesus. Bago po tayo dumako sa panalangin para sa tinapay at kapas na ubas, basahin ko pong nakasulat sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Basahin ko po sa wikang ingles. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Until He comes. Tayo mo na lang para sa tinapay. Tayo mo ko na tayo mo na lang. Muli dakilang Diyos kami lumalapit sa iyong banal na harapan. Papasalamat sa pagkakataon na isipin namin maigi ang kamatay na aming Panginoon at tagapagligtas ni Jesus na siya ay naghirap at siya ay namatay sa krus para sa, kami, para sa aming kaligtasan. Dakilang Ama, ngayon ay sa harap namin ngayon ang tinapay na walang libidura na sumisimbolo sa katawan namin, Panginoon. Bilangin namin naman na basbasan ninyo ang tinapay namin kakainin at ang bawat isa na tatanggap nito. Ito ang maayaming sinasamo at dihandalangin sa ngalan na aming tagapagligtas at Diyos na si Jesus. Amen. ay patuloy man na lang para sa katas ng ubas. Dakila at makapaginan Diyos, kami ang mga nagpapasalamat sa kaligtasan na ibinigay niyo sa amin. Sa sakripisyo ng iyong buktong na anak na si Jesus, na dahil sa Kanya ay kami ay nagkaroon ng kaligtasan. Dakila ang mga ngayon ay sarap namin ngayon ang katas ng ubas na kawangis na Kanyang dugo ama. Ang siyang dugo na bumuhos sa bunok ng kalbaryo at luminis sa bawat sasari. Dalangin namin ama na patuloy namin isipin at alahanin ang kanyang kamatayan hanggang sa muling pagparito niya. Ito lahat ay aming dinadalangin sa ngala na aming tagapagligtas na si Jesus. Amen. Mga kapatid, hiwalay po sa banal na dulang ang patuloy na inutos at ginagawa natin ang pag-ambagan, pagkakaloob. Bago tayo manalangin para dito, basahin ko ang nakasulat sa 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. Ito ay may patungkol sa pagbibigay. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Tayo po ay manalang para sa pagkakalo. Mga Kapanginan Diyos, kami ang mga ay nagpapasalamat sa pagkakato na ito. Papasalamat sa pagkakato na pasalamatan namin kayo sa lahat ng mga bagay, lahat ng mga biyaya na patuloy niyong binibigay sa amin. Papasalamat kami ma sa pagkakataon na makapagbigay rin kami ng salapi na siyang isa sa tabi namin na waama ito ay makatulong sa gawain ng iglesia ninyo. Nawa ito ay makatulong din sa mga kapatid namin o kung sino man na nangangailangan. Langin namin ama na patuloy mo kami pagpalay, patuloy mo kami tulungan at nawaama makatulong rin kami sa iba. 
Dakila ma, patuloy namin dalangin na ang aming salapi na iniligom namin ay makatulong sa ikalalago ng iyong banan na iglesia. Tulad ama ay aming tinapasalamatan sa inyo sa ngalan ng aming tagapagdiktas na si Jesus. Amen. Mga kapatid, tayo ngayon ay dadakos sa pakikinig ng mensahe ng Panginoon sa pangunan ng kapatid na Ernest. Bago po tayo dumako sa pakikinig at paghahanda ay awitin natin ng number 29. All to Jesus I surrender. Number 29. At ihanda po natin ating mga sarili sa pakikinig ng mensahe ng Panginoon. Let's sing the first and the third stanza. First and third lamang po. All to Jesus I surrender. Go with him. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. so glad that you are with us today. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about why do we do all of the things that we do? Why are we Christians? Why do we live a life that for the last two weeks we've spoken about requires sacrifice? And the reason why we do is because of the heavenly city. Open your Bibles, go to Revelations chapter 21 and drop a bookmark there. Revelations chapter 21 and drop a bookmark. And when you get that, go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 and that's where we're going to start this morning's lesson. Scripture tells us that Abraham looked for a city. A city whose builder 
and maker was God. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. By faith, Abraham, when called to a, go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed, and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. You're already in Hebrews chapter 11, stay there, because Abraham was looking for the city that God had prepared for him. Pick up in verse 13. All these people were living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised, they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting there were foreigners and strangers on earth. This earth is not my home. Verse 14, people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to go back. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Now, Scripture also tells us that we are also looking for the city that is to come. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. For here we do not have an enduring city. The Hebrews writer is telling us on this earth we do not have an enduring city, but we are longing for the city that is to come. Revelations chapter 3, verse 12. It's a city that is promised by Jesus Christ. To whom? To everyone? No, it is not for everyone. It is for those who overcome. Revelations 3, 12. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Now John is shown a vision of a great city and a warning, Revelations 21. He was then offered a detailed glimpse. Wouldn't it be great if we could open our iPhones and get a picture of what heaven looked like? Why am I foregoing all of these earthly pleasures? And you got this snapshot, you can look at it. Well, the Apostle John had that privilege. Jesus is shown in the holy city by one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls of wrath, the Revelations 21. Let's pick up in Revelations 21 and 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb, and he carried me way away in the spirit to a mountain great and high. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem,
coming down out of heaven from God. He offered, the angel offered to show John the bride, the lamb's wife. The church is the lamb's wife who carried him away in the spirit and he put him on top of a mountain and he sees this holy city spread before him. He sees the glimpse of what is coming in heaven, Revelations 21 and 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God with a light like jasper stone, precious stones, and clear as crystal, Revelations chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Revelations chapter 4. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. The one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Just imagine how glorious this sight was. There's Someone sitting on a throne and a rainbow is appearing around them. Think of how beautiful it must be. What he's trying to draw is uncertain. I don't understand. But the city may be depicted or may be pictured as being between heaven and earth. So, how does John describe this city? How does John describe the city, the heaven that we are all hoping for? Revelations 21, verse 12, it had a great wall. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And there were three gates on the east and three on the north and three on the south and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. With the 12 gates, with these three gates on each side, with 12 angels at the gates, with the 12 tribes of Israel written over the top of the gate, with the 12 foundations, with the 12 apostles' names inscribed on the foundations. The measurement of the city, the gates, and the wall. Stay in Revelations 21, pick up in verse 15. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and as high as it was long. The angel measured the wall using human measurements and it was 144 cubits thick. Does anybody else know what a cubit is? It's the approximate measurement from an elbow to a fingertip. That's a cubit. The angel had a gold reed to measure them. The angel, its city is laid out as a cube, 12,000 furlongs, or stadia, 1,500 miles, more than 2,000, more than 2,000 kilometers squared. They got room for all of us, we know that, right? Try this on from something you can recognize. 
It's the distance from Manila to Cayagan de Oro and back and back to Cayagan de Oro. Okay, so Manila to Cayagan de Oro three times. That's a long, that's a big city. The wall is 144 cubits, remember? Elbow to fingertip, it's approximately 18 inches. Works out to 216 feet thick. Okay, that's the width of the wall. That's a big city, guys. The construction of the city with the foundation, its walls and the gates Picking up in Revelations 21 and 18, the wall is made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city's walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, diamonds. Oh, wait a minute, I got women in this group. Any of y'all like to have those? <laughs> Any of you? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, we're promised when we get to heaven, they're going to be so plentiful, they're just laying in the wall. Okay, if you built a house here in the Philippines, could you put rubies in your wall? <laughs> Maybe they would disappear. Maybe you should put them on the front gate. <laughs> no, it wouldn't work, right? But heaven's not like that. The foundation of the walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third was agate, and the fourth was emerald. The fifth was onyx, the sixth was ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh hyacinth and the 12th amethyst. The 12 gates were 12 pearls each and were made of a single pearl. The great city was of gold and as pure as transparent glass. This ain't 12 carat, okay? This ain't eight carat. This is pure gold. The wall was jasper, and it was like pure gold. The clear glass, the 12 foundations of the city were, are adorned with precious stones. Hey, I'm looking forward to my heavenly home, you know that? Think about giant pearls that make the gate. Everybody have a pearl or would like to have one? Most of them are very small, right? Just think of a great big one. Truly, a great city, truly, really beyond our comprehension. We're in Revelations 21. We're going to talk about the glorious city, verses 22 through 27. I did not see a temple in the city. Well, wait a minute. This is the city of God. Why is there no temple? They're getting ready to tell us. Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. There's no need to go to temple. There's no need to go to church because when you wake up in the morning, you are in the presence of God. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb of God is its lamp. The nations will all walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. And so, no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Pay attention. Nothing impure will ever enter it. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those names who are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
Think about it. The glory of God is our, there's no sun, there's no moon, because we have the glory of God to provide our life. It's temple. There's no church building. There's no temple because the glory, the Lamb and God are there. Revelations chapter 7, verse 15. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day by day and night by night in his temple. Heaven currently has a temple, but when we get to the heavenly city, there will be no more temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Nothing bad can happen. No more broken hearts. Fly like an eagle, run, and never grow tired. For what is depicted, what is pictured here, is the blessing of an intermediate state. But the eternal state is illuminated by God and the Lamb. Revelations 21, go back to verse 23. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. There is no need for the sun or the moon. Go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 19. When the pages stop, I'll know everybody got there. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, <coughs> and your God will be your glory. <coughs> your sun will never set again, and your moon will never wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light. And here's the promise. Your days of sorrow will end. There will be no more sorrow, no more heartache. Of course, we know that the sun and the moon as we know them will be burned up, will be gone. Second Peter chapter, Revelations 21, 1. We can also, those of you keeping notes, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. Revelations 21, 1. When I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. This is a glorious city lit, illuminated by a glorious God and Savior. It will be enhanced by those who enter it. The nations of the saved shall walk in its light. Revelations 21, 24, the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor. Those of you keeping notes, the, those saved come from many different nations, Matthew 28 and 19. The image that we see is similar to the image that we already saw in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 3 through 9. The kings of the earth will bring their glory and honor it. Revelations 21, 24 the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. Now, does that mean that Adolf Hitler is going to be there? No. What I think they're referring to here is righteous kings like Judah, David, Hezek, Josiah. Those are righteous kings 
of those redeemed by the Lamb, we will all reign together. Revelations 22 and 6. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day because there is no night. Revelations 21:25. On no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night. It will always be day. Those 12 gates of pearl, they shall remain open. There's no night for the glory of God and the Lamb are ever present in heaven. The nations will bring their glory and their honor into it. Revelations 21, 26. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Glory and honor to be added to the glory of God and the Lamb. Revelations 21, 23. The city does not need sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it its light. And the Lamb is its lamp. Glory and honor they received at the coming of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Go there please. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 and following. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people. And to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you. Wait a minute, you mean it includes me? Yes, and it includes you too. Because you believed our testimony to you. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power, he may bring you to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we get to that new city, Nothing de that defiles shall enter it. Nothing that causes an abomination before God or a lie <coughs> shall enter it. Revelations 21.8 But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life shall enter. Revelations 20, verse 15. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. A glorious city enhanced by the glorified, redeemed of every nation. It's provided for, for everlasting service. We have the water of life when we get to heaven. Revelations chapter 22, verse 1. Revelations 22, verse 1. Then the angels showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. A pure river, clear as crystal, and what is its source? It proceeds from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It is promised to those who thirst 
for righteousness. Revelations chapter 22, verse 17. The bride and the spirit say, come, and let those who hear say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. It's all there. The water of life is there for us. What about the tree of life? Revelations 22, verse 2. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river, stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. In the middle of the street, was what Adam and Eve knew as the Garden of Eden. Now it's in the city of God. Straddling the river of life, which gets its nourishment, bearing 12 fruits, yielding fruit every month. Forever we have all that we want. Just grab it out of the tree. With leaves for the healing of the nations, there's no more sickness. The reign of his servants. Revelations chapter 22 verse 3. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. The curse that was put on Adam that required work in Genesis 3 will be no more. The throne of God and the Lamb of, and the lamp is present. God's reign will continue forever. His servants will serve him. There will be work, things for us to do, but it will not be hard work. They shall see his face like the angels. They will enjoy the presence of God. His name will be on their foreheads and they shall be designated his. Revelations chapter 3 in verse 12. Revelations chapter 3 in verse 12. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. There will be no night. There will be no need of a lamp. There will be no need for the sun. For the light is God. They will reign forever and ever. Imagine that. You're on a throne. We will reign forever and ever. A glorious city with provisions to make service possible. Now granted, we are dealing with some highly figurative language. John was shown what was to come in symbols. We must be careful not to try and make the symbols or stretch the symbols beyond their intended purpose. But we can vision in our mind what we have in Christ with the images of our own imagination and with those from other uninspired sources 
or with those provided by Jesus himself to comfort and encourage us as we look for the city to come, Hebrews 13, 14. A city that has its foundations, whose builder and maker is God, Hebrews 11 and 10. A city prepared by God who is not ashamed to be called our God, Hebrews 11, 16. May we, you and I, who are disciples of Jesus Christ, allow the vision to be seen by John, allow that vision to excite and encourage us to remain faithful until we walk through those pearly gates. Listen then to these words, Revelations 22, 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they have may have right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life come. If you are a member of this church and you've fallen back in lays of the world when we stand and sing that invitation song, come. If you are a Christian and you've not been faithful when we sing that invitation song, come. If you are in need of prayers for your physical well-being, for your job, for your family, come. If you have never put on Jesus Christ through the act of baptism for the remission of your sins, come. Let them come. In the meantime, everybody else stand up and sing that song. Let us sing him number 5050. Are you washing the blood? Let us sing number 50. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing for? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in it? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you washing the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you holy, spotless? Are you white as snow? Are you washing the blood? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest this moment in the crucified? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you washing the blood in the soul cleansing blood? Oh, the land. 
are your garments, spotless are they white as snow. Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? For lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb. Join me in prayer, please. God, we come before you this morning. And our attitude, as always, is gratitude. We thank you, God, for the blessings that we have. We thank you, God, for the people who, who are here with us this morning, both in person and online. We ask, Lord, that your promises of the Holy City will be something that hold a promise for us. But, Lord, we also have problems here on earth, and we have things that we are dealing with. There are people worldwide who are hurting because of this virus. There are families worldwide who are suffering because of the quarantine and the lockdown status worldwide. We ask God that you grant us strength as we bring the salt and your light to the world around us. And may we also bring compassion and peace. We ask, Lord, that you grant us these requests and that you continue to help us to grow in thy word every day. Through Christ's name we pray, amen. amen.